Hello, it is time to explore a bit more in detail the Fabrut Pro interferometer. Let's continue where we left it in the previous video. If we define the reflection and transmission coefficient as the ratio of the reflected and transmitted amplitudes of the electric field over the incident amplitude, we also found Stokes relations that relate the reflection and transmission coefficients. I will define reflectivity and transmissivity, capital R and capital T, as the reflection coefficient squared and as the product of the transmission coefficient from medium 1 into medium 2 and from medium 2 into medium 1. T T prime. Let's recover the Fabry Perot interferometer. Two partially reflective plates parallel, where one of them can be moved, and light coming from a light source entering in the interferometer and being reflected successive times inside of it. We call E sub i to the incident amplitude of the electric field. The amplitude transmitted into the interferometer will then be t times E sub i. In reaching the second surface, light will be reflected as r times t E sub i, and light will be transmitted as t prime times t E sub i. Light will be reflected again as r squared t e sub i and light will be transmitted again as r squared t prime t e sub i and so on. Remember that the interference pattern on a screen at the other side of the interferometer will depend on the phase difference delta, which we found it is 2 pi over lambda times the path difference equal to 4 pi over lambda d cosine of theta, where theta is the angle light makes inside the interferometer. If we write the incident beam of light in complex form, E0 times e to the i omega t, then the first beam going out of the interferometer will be E1 equal to E0 capital T e to the i omega t. The second beam will be written as E0 capital R capital T e to the i omega t minus delta because of the phase difference. The third outgoing beam will be E0 capital R squared capital T e to the i omega t minus 2 delta, and so on. Now it is interesting to calculate the total amplitude due to the superposition of all these beams of light. E sub total equal to E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4, and so on. Factoring out E0 t and E to the i omega t, This is a geometric progression whose sum is given by the total irradiance is the square of the electric field because we are using complex notation this will have to be e times its complex conjugate e star for which we change the sign of the imaginary terms The numerators result in 1, this sum of complex exponentials in the denominator can be arranged using Euler's equation. I sine of delta cancel, 
back into the expression for the irradiance. Now, using this trigonometric identity, we can arrange 1 plus r squared minus 2r as the square of the subtraction, factor that out in the denominator. This is the Airy formula. It gives the irradiance in terms of the incident amplitude, the phase difference, and the reflectivity. In the case where there are no losses, that means all light is either transmitted or reflected, there is no absorption of light in the medium, then we have that T plus R is 1. This is the ideal situation, but sometimes it is not the real situation. Then it all simplifies. From where we can calculate the maximum irradiance when the sine of delta halves is zero. And the minimum irradiance when the sine of delta halves is one. Now, let me define this ratio here as the coefficient of finesse. This coefficient is related with how good contrast we can get between bright and dark fringes with interferometer, while the reflectivity goes from 0 to 1, the coefficient of finesse goes from 0 to infinity. Given a more fine measurement of this contrast, back to the transmissivity, capital T, it is defined as the ratio of the transmitted irradiance over the incident irradiance, what we call I over E naught squared in this calculation. Substituting the radiance i, and when there are no losses, then this, for a given reflectivity r and a given phase difference, remember that the phase difference depends on the distance d, the wavelength lambda, and the angle of incidence theta. So, for given r and delta, we can plot this transmissivity. Well, we can see that the contrast between bright and dark fringes is very dependent on the reflectivity. But for a high reflectivity, we get to obtain very high contrast, a very good visibility. The higher the reflectivity, the narrower the transmissivity peaks. This interferometer gives better profile of the transmissivity than the Michelson interferometer. May science be with you. <laughs>